got him. Fall back, fall back. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need everybody on this one. Just keep going. Oh my gosh, this is like a super tug of war. It is a big animal. There we go. One, two, three. All stories have a beginning. This one begins with water. And as we drove across the parched terrain toward the mountains, the one thing on our minds was whether or not we would find any. If you were to guess, I bet you'd say the landscape looks like Africa. But believe it or not, this is the dry season in northwestern Costa Rica. And on this adventure, the team and I are heading out into the Palo Verde National Park to search for American crocodiles. Leading the expedition is Dr. Chris Murray. A biologist by degree, he has spent the past four years capturing and recording the giant reptiles of this region to better understand and mediate the human crocodile conflict. Researching crocodiles is a dangerous job, so Chris always has with him lifelong friend and reptile wrangler, Mike Easter. Mike is the snare man, and I'd wager a bet that he has snared more crocodiles in the past five years than almost anyone else in this field. Trust me, he's that good. Together, these two make up one of the finest crocodile catch teams in the world. And today, they are bringing me into the fray. All right, Chris, so we've been walking for quite some time now, searching for water. No water in sight, but just a lot of extremely dry earth. That's so right. much so that I'm able to just break it apart in chunks. And at one point in time, this was a wetland, right? That's right. So where have all the crocodiles gone? Well, a lot of them actually walk about a mile all the way to the river It's over there. But a lot of them we've actually found are right underneath us right here. Buried down in the mud. Yep, in the mud. So as the waters will recede, they just sit and let the mud harden over top of them. And they're estivating underneath this mud. Okay, now explain to us what estivation is. So estivation is when the animals actually sit underground, slow down everything that's happening internally, and wait out the air and environment until the rains return. So right now we could be sitting on top of crocs. We're standing on top of a whole bunch of crocs all through this landscape. And they're waiting for the rains to come back so that they can emerge up on the mud. In about a month or two. In order to properly conduct your research, you have to find the crocodiles. And I don't imagine you're going to dig down into the dirt after them. No. Nope. So how do we find them? We're going to have to find what water still remains. Okay. So the search for water continues. The best way to cover ground at Palo Verde is by SUV. And while the goal was to find crocodiles, the odds were definitely stacked against us, as after three hours of searching, we found nothing but a small stagnant puddle and the sun-baked remains of a fallen giant. Sweet. It's windy, there's no water, it's really hot. Finding crocodiles is gonna be a big challenge. See, so what do you think of our chances? To be honest, I think we, I think we came at the wrong time. Yeah? Yeah, this is, this, there's like an extended drought, so, we may have missed our opportunity for a croc here in Costa Rica. So with the sun high in the sky and the heat literally cooking us alive, we decided it was best that we return to base camp. Taking an alternate route back, we came upon a pair of drainage pipes in a low spot that still held some water. Oh, here's some water. Ooh, look at that. That's a tiny puddle, but will that work, Chris? Maybe something in that? Let's go see. All right. Not exactly a wetland sanctuary, but it was worth a stop. There's a tiny bit of water. Yeah, there's crocs in there. No way. There's crocs? What? Yeah, look down in there, Mike. Hold on, let me look. Wait in there, I can see scoops. Oh, you're right, oh, yeah. I see a tail. So, wow. Cool. Okay, so we have been searching and searching and searching. Finally, I mean, look at this pocket of water. This is nothing more than a couple inches deep. Can you tell how big the crocodiles are? The scoots look big. I think we need a better look. Wow, okay, so there are definitely crocodiles inside of this drainage pipe. Now it's just a matter of getting them out of there. This is gonna be a challenge. That's the challenge. All right, let's do this. What do they look like over there, guys? If you look in the pipe, I think they're probably seven feet in. How long is this pipe, you think? 40 feet? You're gonna have to crawl in there. Yeah, I am. Both pipes had crocodiles in them. So Chris and Mike carefully analyzed the situation and began to prep their gear. Test the snare. How's that? That's good. good? Yeah. I'll go around its top jaw. Perfect. 
All right, Mike, duct tape. We're gonna use these needles. Those are heparinized and we'll stick them right in here. All the blood will go into these little vacuum tainers. All right, so we got to keep those out with us. Measuring tapes here. Bags for scoots are here and all the writing implements are up in the top. Got the book? Yeah, the book's right here in orange. All the writing stuff's right here. You guys ready? Yeah, man, yeah. let's do this. Ultimately, it was determined that the croc on the right would be the easiest to catch first. All right, so right now we're just trying to scare these animals towards the other end of the pipe where Mike can snare them. We're having trouble because they know it's obviously really nice in there and we're not in there. So. Using a simple scare tactic, Chris was able to clump together soft balls of mud, which he tossed into the pipe, creating splashes that scared the crocodile out the far end and right into Mike's snare. Oh, yeah. Adam, look at that! Nice snare, Mike! Look at that! That is the American Crocodile right there! What an effort to get him out of that pipe! We work quickly to record the animal's length. 121 centimeters. And Chris pulled a blood sample. Just like getting a little booster shot at the doctor, right? That's exactly right. It was important to put as little stress on the crocodile as possible. And in a matter of minutes, it was released back into the wild. Now on to the other one. However, this croc was significantly larger and tucked in the drain pipe that wasn't nearly as accessible. Is there any way you can see in the pipe what's moving right now? I'll try. Okay. Any movement at all? I would probably normally go right into this drainage pipe, but Chris says that is way too dangerous because if I do, Mike, those crocodiles yeah. may ambush me. We have a lot of crocodiles down near you already. Okay, so that means he's only gonna go your way. Yeah, and he's biting the stick. Okay, as long as it's a stick and not your hand. Okay, so what we're gonna do is completely reverse our scenario. Chris is gonna come on this side. We're gonna try to flush the crocodiles out the other end. The biggest one obviously can't turn around in the pipe, so we're gonna try to coax him the other direction and snare his snout from the other end. We're not giving up. If you thought snaring a crocodile out in the open was dangerous, imagine doing it from inside a drain pipe. All right, Mike, tell me what you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna head in there, and my hope is that... Wait, you're going in there? Yeah. Okay. I'm going in there, and my hope is that um, the crocodile continues to face forward, and I can slip this right over uh, the snout. We're just trying to get these crocs by any means necessary at this point, keeping ourselves and the crocs safe, so can't stop trying. With that said, Mike Easter looked danger in the face and climbed head first into the pipe. This is uh, like that game of operation, only big teeth and a lot of power. My role was to shine the crocodile with a flashlight so Mike could see it, while Chris splashed water on the far end to coax it toward the snare. All right, so if Mike does snare the largest crocodile, it's gonna take both of us to be able to pull it out of the pipe. So I have to run back to there, grab the rope and help him pull it out. All right, Mike is now moving even further. Oh. Mike is all the way in the pipe now. You're all the way in the pipe, buddy. We all held in silence as the master snaresman worked his magic. Okay, so Mike is getting further into the pipe. The largest crocodile is actually coming towards us right now, which is exactly what we want. And then, it happened. Got him! Got him! Hold back, hold back! Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We need everybody on this one. Just keep going. Oh my gosh, this is like a super tug of war. It is a big animal. There we go. One, two, three. Back up, back up. Whoa. One, two, three. Here we go, big fella. Catch an American crocodile out of a drainage pipe. <laughs> wow! We need more rolls. I know. Holy cow! I'm not hungry anymore. I just need some dirt. Yeah, you got a little mud on your face, yeah. Mike. Well, this crocodile still has a lot of energy left in it. Mike's covered in mud. All right, so what Chris is doing right now is we got to get a towel over the eyes of the crocodile so we can keep it calmed down. And then we're both going to jump right on its back. Yep. Watch it, Chris. Two, three. Perfect. 
This big fellow might have to fight get the back legs get up. Get those legs up, up legs Coyote. Up. Yep. Get them up over your calves. All right, both back legs are secure. This is the crack that we have been after all day in that drainage pipe. It is the biggest one that was in there. Look at the scutes on the back of this tail. This is a big animal. All right, so right now Chris is using all of his body weight to keep the animal locked in place. Mike has now secured the jaws with electrical tape. I've got the back legs and part of the tail under control, but this animal could erupt in power at any second. Still a lot of fight left in this beast. All right, I'm gonna sit up. Okay. Good. Wow. Good. Great work, that's, guys. That's wow. a big crocodile. Following protocol, we worked as a team to record the crocodile's length from snout to tail tip. All right, we are three meters on the dot. Nice. I verified the animal's gender. Yeah. And it's a female. And then Chris carefully extracted the always important blood sample, which when taken back to the lab, will provide him with vital hormone data for his ongoing research. Definitely intimidating to sit on an animal of this size. And right now she's being completely calm, but I can't lose focus at any point because she's actually building her energy back up. So, you know, it doesn't look like it, but I am holding on as tight as I can right now to make sure that she doesn't thrash her body around and throw me off. We have searched all day for any water that may possibly have crocodiles in it. And lo and behold, right here in these drainage pipes is where we found the American crocodile. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. With the data collected, we carefully move this ancient reptile back toward the deeper water, removed the tape from its snout, and watched as she burst into the water and disappeared back into the pipe. Yes. All right. We did it. Ultimately, mission, ac mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. All right, that's how to go get washed up and get some dinner. The American crocodile hails as one of the greatest relics to call this planet home. And to this day, they have survived even the dinosaurs. Their struggle for survival is battled with incredible instinct. And whether buried beneath the cracked earth or hidden in a drain pipe, these reptiles continue to defy the odds. When it comes to Chris and Mike, their work is never done, because eventually the rains will return, and when they do, there will always be the next crocodile to catch. If you thought this adventure was epic, make sure to go back and watch our expedition deep into the heart of the rainforest, where I managed to find and capture the elusive water anole. And don't forget, subscribe to join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. He's being completely limp in my hand, because he wants me to think that he's dead. He's not, trust me, at any second he could go just like that and launch off of my hand.